But the erector sets aren't selling. Well, I, I know that, Ben, but it, it's a good toy. It's a, it's a good idea. That may be, but good ideas don't sell themselves. Well, couldn't you just leave one or two of them on the shelves? Can't waste the shelf space this close to Christmas. Uh, it's even just one. Would Sorry, AC. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, thank you, Ben. Off you go. I think it's your turn. I'm getting old. All right. So, how did it go at the toy store? Uh, well, the holidays are a traditional time, and the buyers buy really traditional things. And so, introducing new products. They're not selling, are they? <clears throat> no, Dad. Well, uh, not yet. Oh, so what are you going to do? Well, I thought this would appeal to you. Uh... <laughs> He's going back to medicine. I knew he'd come to his senses. No, Dad. We decided we need to focus on advertising. Then you'd be wasting your time. We were hoping he'd consider a loan. Then I'd be wasting my money. No, actually, you'd see a good return on your investment. The American toy market has untapped potential. See, people have always bought German imports. No. This lunatic enterprise of yours is a failure. It's time to cut your losses and return to your calling. I don't want to be a doctor. You graduated first in your class in medical school. You've got the hands of a surgeon. And you want to waste them by pulling rabbits out of hats. There's all kinds of ways to heal. Oh. <laughs> Dad. Magic and toys can sometimes do more for children than pills and surgeons. You say you want to give to children. Start with your own. Penny for your thoughts. Two pennies? I'll write a nickel, but that's my final offer. You don't have a nickel. 
father's right. We put all our money into toys. We don't have anything to show for it. We've put all our money into toys, and I don't care what your father says. You wouldn't be happy being a doctor. I wouldn't. But we'd have money. And our baby would have his own room. That's true. Now we just have 200 erector sets. Our child will just have to build his own city. <laughs> hmm. Oh. Would you like to have your own city? <clears throat> Would that be of interest to you? Hmm? What's he saying? Be quiet out there. I'm trying to get some sleep. <laughs> I can't wait to meet this person. Are you a boy? Are you a girl? Who's inside there? Gilly, that's it. Hmm? We have to take it out of the box. What? We have to take it out of the box. It's called an erector set. A child can build in miniature anything that an adult can build. Uh, Ferris wheels, uh, uh, towers, towers, the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower, even. But it's so big. How do we get it home? <laughs> well, it comes in this box. You see, it comes in pieces, and then you have to put them together yourself. How many pieces? Mm, hundreds. Hundreds. But you... I don't think we can afford it. Oh, no, 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 no. You don't have to buy it all at once. You see, you build a couple pieces now, and then you add to it over the years. It's got uh, wheels and uh, gears and motors. It's a little electric motor here. Can we have one? I'll think about it. Please. Please. It's educational as well. It, it teaches the complete nuts and bolts of design and construction. Engineering. And engineering. Really, yeah, it's time. Oh. <laughs> I think my wife is trying to tell me I've been going on about this a little too long. <laughs> no, it, it's time I'm having the baby. It's time. It, 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 it's time, Frank. It's, it's yeah, time. Go, go, go. All right. Here, um, I'll handle this. All right. Uh, yeah, my, my brother, Frank, can answer any questions that you might have. And remember that the, uh, the erector said it's not just one toy. It's a hundred toys. All go, one. would you go? I'll take care of it. It's a constant source of inspiration. It's, it's an investment in your children's future. It's not just one toy. It's many toys. Gilly, I don't have all day. We, we, we don't have all day. Sorry. Hi. Uh, I just wanted to know. My wife seems to get a little bit of uh, pain every uh, occasion. Um. How is she? No one allowed in but doctors. See, if you've been a doctor. If you finish that thought, you're going to need a doctor. Stay up there. 
Yes. Come on. Just stick it in us. <sighs> Shouldn't you be at the toy store? I'm not needed. They're not selling. <sighs> They're sold out. They're sold out? Yeah, they flew off the shelves. Ben said he's never seen anything like it. They flew off the shelves? We're in the toy business? Yeah. We're really in the toy business. <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> Come on, come on. Uh, Are we going to name him? Alfred Carlton Gilbert Jr. Really? What do you think of that? Oh, little Al. You and I are going to have a lot of fun in this life. He looks like you. <laughs> I hear I have a grandson. Oh, okay. Oh, you are so beautiful. <laughs> he looks like me. Hmm. Well, he does. Frank tells me it's been a successful day all around. So it seems. I suppose it would be foolish to hope that you would abandon your endeavor at this point. Dad, I, I really... Therefore, it would seem if my grandson is to prosper at all, that there's no choice but to invest in his future by making some small contribution to yours. So I shall. Thank you, Charles. You are very welcome, Mary. Not only to my investments, but to its safekeeping as well. It's what? I keep a close eye on all my investments, and that won't change because my investment is you. Therefore, I want full access to all your accounts and ledgers. Dad. That is a condition of my offer. As the phrase goes, take it or leave it. Well, as the phrase goes... We'll, we'll take, take it. it. We'll take it.
I'm saying that balsa costs far less than metal, and the research shows parents are suspicious of the wind-up mechanisms. Read it. Let's go do our own research. Why couldn't you read it? I don't have to read it. I go through all the trouble of getting the research done. I don't understand. All I'm asking you to do is have a look at it and read it. I'm going to save us a lot of time and look energy. At this. Look at it. It takes two minutes to read a piece of paper. I don't understand why Watch you can't head. do that. Good morning, children. Good morning. I something for you. Okay, kids, watch this. Hope you didn't spend too much on that research. By the way, doesn't bad research come out of your salary? It's an airplane. Kids love it. We loved airplanes. Jim, we used to play with the planes all the time. Now that's an airplane. Nicely done, Sam. <laughs> What's that, Sam? I came up with this for the boys down in the furnace room. I rigged a pinwheel blade onto a erector set motor and motorized cooling fan. Wow. <laughs> I like it. You know what? Makes a heck of a propeller, too. Alfred! Alfred! Do you know what your wife is doing? She's writing Christmas bonuses! Yes! Mary, are you writing Christmas bonuses? Yes. Put down another $200 for Sam Ryder. He just came up with the most remarkable thing. What? On top of the exorbitant wages you pay him? We can afford it, Dad. The company's doing fine. Employees are the heart of the whole operation. When they're happy, they're productive. You already spoil these people with these absurd benefits. Medical insurance, babysitting. No other company offers them. You know, Dan, I once heard a successful and great businessman say that it's a sorry man who abandons the people who made him a success. That's Maudlin. Who said that? You. Me. Me. Anyway, anyway, Alfred. Don't let... A few years of success go to your head. This nation is in difficult times. We are on the brink of war. You really think people will keep buying toys? Change these practices, or I can assure you, those people won't even have a company to work for. Remember not to come down chimneys that have fires in them. <laughs> now, as you know, it is far too early for Santa to be here this evening, and so he has sent me in his place, the Great Gilbert! Oh! <laughs> and it is a very lucky thing that he has, because I hear that there may be some magic in the air this evening. Let's see if we can find it. No, it's close. I'm not there yet. What? Don't move. Don't breathe. Don't look. <laughs> Fantastic, Frank. Do not hide even in this greasy ahead. <laughs> ah! Ah! Is it in here? No. Is it in here? No. Open the mouth. Fine teeth, no coins, but... Uh-huh. Thomas, you look ill. Cough. <coughs> cough again. <coughs> it's a terrible cough you have, but here you are. <laughs> now, a little something for... Oh! Now, you parrots 
are probably thinking that our old Santa has forgotten you. Never, 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 never. We know the bucket appears empty. We have to put a little magic wave of the hand until we find some envelopes. And with the help of the magnificent Mary and the fantastic Frank. Merry Christmas, everyone. Yeah. This place runs the way it does because of you, Sam. And you, my little Thomas. Hmm? And you, large Thomas. <laughs> when are you going to come to work for us, huh? The next year, sir. If the army doesn't get me first. I look forward to it. <laughs> what did you do? You think it'll work? You don't mess it up. I don't mess it up. <laughs> and now the great Gilbert will take his leave. <laughs> Under fire in no man's land, American troops have now suffered their first cas... cas... casualties. What's that? It means we lost more soldiers. <laughs> Al, look at this. Want to help me build the rest? I don't know. It looks kind of silly. Anyone ever tell you, you sound an awful lot like your grandfather sometimes. <laughs> Listen to this. The second division of the American Expo... Expo... Well, Alice, isn't it? You couldn't get me to sit still and read a newspaper. We can't get him to stop. And we'll reach the front line by the end of the week. Thank you. Hello? Is speaking? Yes, I'll hold for Secretary Roosevelt. Hello, Mr. Secretary. Uh, very well, thank you. Uh-huh. All right, I'll see you then. <laughs> the National Defense Council wants me to meet with them. What did he say? They want me to help advise them about the war effort. <laughs> oh, Gilly. I don't know what I could possibly tell them. Well, it doesn't surprise me that they're asking for your advice. You're going to be a dollar a year man. Yeah. The businessman who helped the president with the war, he pays him a dollar a year. Hmm. Ah, that's a salary your grandfather would approve of. Gilbert, thank you for coming. I'm Newton Baker, Secretary of War. <laughs> Come with me, please. And gentlemen, Mr. Gilbert has arrived. Let me introduce you. This is Treasury Secretary McAdoo. It's Mr. Gilbert. Secretary of the Navy Daniels and Assistant Secretary Franklin Roosevelt. Hello. Pleasure, sir. We appreciate your taking time for us during your busy season. I'm honored to be here. Mr. Gilbert, we'd like you to serve as one of our industry consultants. You mean be a dollar a year man? <laughs> Truth be told, we don't pay that much. <laughs> uh, Mr. Gilbert, we find ourselves in dire straits. We were in no way prepared for this war when we entered into it. And now, not only do we have to build an army from scratch, but we have to equip them. Transportation, ammunition, uniforms. Production is falling far behind our needs, and uh, that's why we need your help. Whatever I can do. 
We need you to convert your toy factory into a munitions factory. And we need you to start as soon as possible. Convert my factory? You, you mean stop making toys? Well, at uh, this time, they're a non-essential industry. They're essential to children, sir? I mean, can you imagine children without toys? We, we might as well cancel Christmas or cancel their birthdays. Yes, well, we know this must come as quite a shock to you. How long would I need to do this? We hope the war will end quickly. Quite frankly, we have no idea how long it will last. All we know is we're sending our soldiers into battle and they need equipment now. Weapons, ammunition. We need bullets more than building blocks. What do you say? Mr. Gilbert, we can't make you do this. But your country is asking for your help. Now. Oh, I'm so sorry I missed Christmas morning with you and all the presents are opened and everything is gone. And I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if I have something for you. <laughs> Elmer, Did you get here. to meet the president? Well, not this trip. Maybe next time. <laughs> Maybe. The president's a very busy man. Yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you made it home for Christmas. Mm. How was your trip? Never mind the trip. What happened? Did you get those Democrats straightened out? Oh, for goodness sakes, Charles, let him take off his coat. Welcome home, dear. Welcome. It's Christmas. Even the government can wait. Well, we were afraid you wouldn't make it for dinner. Who wants to carve? I will. No, I will. <clears throat> the head of the family always carves the turkey. You can say the grace. Oh, this looks delicious. You say that every year. I mean it every year. Oh. <laughs> huh? Come to the table? Oh. Dear God, we thank you for the bounty of this table and for all your many blessings. Amen. 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 Who is that? Oh, what the blazes? What the blazes? Ah, Alfred Carlton Jr. What are you doing? Nothing. I wasn't doing anything, Grandpa. Honest. Frank. Frank? Who's Frank? Is there a Frank in the house? <laughs> Merry Christmas, Al. What is it? <laughs> what is it? It is... the Misto... Mystic... Spirit Transmitter! Whoa! <laughs> it's heavy. This was one of your father's first inventions. Oh, my goodness. Charles, I thought you told him to get rid of that after the little bank escapade. I thought so, too. Mm -hmm. What bank escapade? Yeah, it's not important. Tell him. Nonsense. Come on, tell him. Before you were born, I, uh... I went to this one particular bank to try and get a loan for starting up the new company. I was fairly certain that the man would turn me down. Everyone else had turned me down. So before the meeting, I, <clears throat> I snuck into the banker's office and I hid this behind a portrait of one of their founding fathers. I think founding father, stuffy. <laughs> and then after the very <laughs> nice man lightly turned me down and then even more politely kicked me out of his office. Oh, he sat back. 
down on his desk to get to work. <laughs> and that's when he heard... <laughs> This isn't funny. Yes, it is. So you tricked him into giving you a loan? Well, not exactly. The guy opened the door. And <laughs> caught him talking into the microphone. <laughs> I was pretty sure he was going to kick me out quite quickly. He didn't? No, no. He loved it. He gave him a loan for $5,000 right then and there. Say, Grandpa. Ah. Uh. Weren't you a banker yourself? <laughs> Indeed I was. So why didn't your bank give Dad the loan? At the time, he wasn't a good financial risk. <laughs> a toast. Yes, yes. Oh, certainly, certainly. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yes, to all of us. Well, mess, did you know that? All right, we put this off long enough. What happened in Washington? They want us to stop making toys. What? And to retool the factory for the war effort. They need gas masks and flares and revolvers. They've already offered us a contract to start making Colt 45 automatics. Oh, Gilly. What an opportunity. Here's your chance to make something useful and still serve your country. Well, I haven't completely decided yet. What's to decide? It's your duty. There's actually a lot to consider. I'm not sure the factory could be retooled effectively. There's no telling when the war will end. Who knows when we'll go back to making toys. But how can you say no to your country? Mm -hmm. We're not the only business they're asking, Mother. Frank, what do you think? You haven't said a word. I don't think I'm the one to ask right now. My number came up. I've been drafted. Oh, my God. Why didn't you tell us? I just found out this morning. Besides, I didn't want to ruin everybody's Christmas. Rowan. <laughs> Nonsense. Oh, both my sons serving their country. Ah, it's a proud day for the Gilbert family. <laughs> Merry Christmas. To safe days. And the risque nights. <laughs> oh, Frank. What am I going to do around here without you? Yeah. You'll have to fight with that on your own. Personally, I would rather take on the Jugmans any day. <laughs> I won't have to fight with them if I take on the defense contracts. I'll finally be doing something respectable. Don't do it for him. Do it if you think it's right. And what do you think? Honestly? I'd feel safer in the trenches well, knowing my equipment was made by a guy like you. Oh, I almost forgot. Your Christmas present. Wait until you see this. Oh. It's Mr. Edison's latest. Mm -hmm. It's called a dictaphone. Oh, Frank, this is great. I can't believe you got this. You don't know how hard it was finding you something you didn't invent. Okay. Okay. Speechless. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Speechless. I don't know what to say. That's amazing. <laughs> uh, 
There once was a fellow named Gilly who had dreams that some folks said were silly. Silly? But his brother and wife love how Gilly loves life. And we know that he'll never stop dreaming. Will he? Merry Christmas, big brother. Merry Christmas, Frank. Merry Christmas. We'll never be able to find him with all these people in here. Yes, we will. Al, give us a hand. We should have decided on a specific place to meet. Well, he wouldn't leave without saying goodbye. No, he wouldn't. Go get him. Uncle Frank! Don't forget to come home Oh, ease, soldier. Are you going to be gone long, Uncle Frank? Are you kidding? Once those Germans see me marching up, they'll surrender by the boat road. I should have packed you something to eat. Now, why didn't I think of that? You know, they feed soldiers now. And you think they can cook as well as I can? You're right. You better come with me. No, stop. You just take care of yourself, all right? And don't try to be a hero. You just come home safe. I will, Mom. Come on. Come on. <laughs> you stay out of trouble, you hear? Okay. <laughs> you take care of him, Mary. You're the only one I trust to do it. That's easy for you to say. You just have a war to win. <laughs> it's not going to be the same around here without you. I'll be home before you know it. I don't know what to say to you, Frank. Yeah. Well, you never were much of a talker. I'll be waiting for you. I'll be home by Christmas. That'll be the best Christmas ever. I know we're all disappointed that we won't be making toys for a while. But it's up to us here on the home front to do everything we can to support our boys overseas. Right now, I'd like to introduce to all of you the gentleman who'll be taking over for my brother Frank for a while, our new production manager, Mr. Hiram Harris. I'm glad to be here. Although, uh, from everything I hear about Frank Gilbert, I've got a tough act to follow. But that's why we're here, right? To make sure that Frank and all our other brave soldiers are fighting with the best weapons possible. That's what I made at my last company. And that's what I'm gonna help you make here. You'll be surprised how quickly we can convert the plant and start turning out items vital to the war effort. We'll schedule training sessions as we refit the equipment. In no time at all, we'll all feel right at home with our new mission.
You'll be surprised how quickly we can convert the plant. We start turning out items vital to the war effort. It's work you can all take pride in. Thank you. Production is fully implemented. Output has increased in only six months. We could do something about these children running around here, though. Why are there children here anyway? And where would you have them be, Mr. Harris? All of our employees are husbands and wives. It just makes good sense that we'd provide a place for the children to play. We have to rethink that policy. The policy has always been sound. And with more women working now, there's only a greater need. It's a question of liability. We have guns and explosives lying around. This factory simply cannot be a playground. Time to meet the new equipment delivery. He's right, Mary. It's too dangerous in the factory for the children now. Are you happy with everything, Gilly? Everything we've worked for, everything we've built has been changed. It's only temporary. We don't know that. We don't know how long this war will last. It could be a year. It could be two. It could be five. What would you have me do? Look it through it. Sam? Good. Thomas shipped out yesterday. Oh. Yeah. He looked so grown up in his uniform. It reminded me of when he was a little boy playing war. Yeah. So quickly, doesn't it? Yeah, we had some good times together. Mm. I think my favorite was when we used to go fishing. Mm. Up before the sun, feeling like you own the world. We just sit and talk, wait for a bite. It was so peaceful out there, so quiet. Just the sound of his little voice. He's a good boy. I just look so grown up in that uniform. Good night, Sam. Hi, Daisy. As we marched in, the troops were retreating, ready to surrender, shouting, Guerre fini, guerre fini. Guerre fini, that means the war is over. My lieutenant, Speaks the lingo, so he shouts back. Mm, non pas fini. Non pas fini, which loosely translates as retreat. Hell, we just got here. Amidst the horrors of war, I see families torn apart and struggling to stay together. Mothers and fathers working through all the ruin to try and bring hope to their little ones. It makes me think of my own dear family and miss you more than I can say. May we be together soon. Your loving Frank. I can't believe he's been gone six months. The papers say our positions in France aren't all that secure. Don't you worry about France. But I'm worried about Uncle Frank. He'll be fine. I'll tell you what, why don't we, uh, why don't we go outside toss a ball around? Baseball? Yes. Okay. All right. All right, Al. Keep your eye on the ball. Keep your eye on the ball. Billy, yeah, you still have all these letters from the children to respond to. Well, I'll read them to me now, and I'll answer them when we play. 
heart. I'm not very good. You just need a little bit of practice. Dear Mr. Gilbert, the Erector set is my favorite toy. My parents gave me my first set last Christmas. Sometimes I even let my little brother play with it with me. I want to be an engineer when I grow up. Uh, all right, Al, just loosen up a little bit. Don't be afraid of it. Focus. Dear Mr. Gilbert, I think your toys are the greatest. When I grow up, I would like to work as an inventor in your toy company. Save me a place in your company, your loving son, Rory. <laughs> tell Rory I'm very happy to have received his letter. And uh, tell him to send a photograph of himself and some of his models. We'll put them in the newsletter. All right, Al, now, focus, hmm? Al, let's forget about focusing. Just let's have fun, all right? How much longer do we have to have fun for? Well, you can stop right now if you want to. Thanks. What's on your mind? Nothing. Don't be so hard on yourself. I'm not. Sweet dreams. Mom, does boys write to Dad? Why do some of them sign their letters, your loving son? I'm sure they just look up to him. Or maybe they wish he was their father. Maybe. And maybe he wishes to? No. Your father loves you very much. He's your father, Al. No one else is. Now you get some sleep. be so distant with your own son. I'm not distant. You have no idea who he is, what he thinks, what he likes. It's easier to know what he doesn't like. He doesn't like sports, doesn't like outings, doesn't even like toys. Really, Mary, how did you and I have such a serious child? He's not like you, Killy. Oh, I know that. He has a different sense of fun. Honestly, sometimes I think you're just like your father. That's not true. You both want your boys to be just like you. Nothing you do is ever good enough for your father, and nothing Al does is ever good enough for you. Are you actually telling me that I don't understand children? One child. Sometimes you act like those children in your letters are more important than your own son. just like to spend some time with my son. But he's never ridden a bicycle Aww. before. And it's beyond high time that he learns. Al, come on down. Atta boy. Go on, oh, Al. You'll do on, fine. Dude. Go on. I'm gonna fall. I just know it. There you go. Yeah. Good. Oh, I'm gonna fall. I just know it. Everybody falls. That's how you learn. Don't, don't, don't let go of me. I'm right here. Don't let go of me, okay? All right, now you just look straight ahead. Where you look is where you go. The faster, the steadier. You all right? Come on. You're doing it. Keep pedal, 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 pedal. Go, go, keep pedaling, keep pedaling, go. Coming in, coming in. Allie? You were riding all by yourself. You did great. You let me fall. You said you'd help me, and you just let me fall. Al, I didn't. I'm sorry, Al. What were you thinking? What are you thinking? It's a bicycle, Mary. He's an eight-year-old boy who cannot ride a bike. 
just want him to play while he can. Uncle Frank! I regret to inform you that Private First Class Francis Gilbert and four other men have not returned to their unit for two weeks. At this time, he's officially missing in action. We wish to extend our deepest sympathies to you and your family. I'm very sorry. Take a look at these. Santa Claus wants you to give up Christmas. <laughs> now, what do you think? We took your idea and expanded it. I'm sorry, I don't follow. My idea. Yes, you remember when we asked you to stop making toys and you said that would be like canceling Christmas. Well, we realized that was an ingenious idea, sort of national call to arms. We cancel the holiday as united people, save resources, and sell a lot of war bonds instead. It's going to be a very patriotic campaign. Buy bonds, not toys. He won't get a Christmas... Why should we? All we want for Christmas is our boys back home. <laughs> the fellows at Public Information did a great job, didn't they? And, of course, we want to give credit where credit is due. <laughs> A.C. Gilbert says it's no time for toys, boys. Are you actually talking about Canceling Christmas? Well, you see, we've lost 15,000 men in the past two months. And we need to prepare for the worst. It's part of a massive conservation effort, like meatless Mondays and wheatless Wednesdays. Joyless holidays. Well, your conversion has been so successful, hasn't it? I understand your revenues have even increased. Plus, you can help sell the idea to children. If A.C. Gilbert tells them to ask for bonds instead of toys, they'll do it. Think of it. Our nation's most famous toy maker. What better spokesman could we have? Did you get another letter from Uncle Frank? It's an old one. Do you think they'll ever find him? Come here. Let me tell you something about Uncle Frank. He's a pretty clever man. I bet by now he's infiltrated the entire German military. He's engineering their whole defeat single-handedly. You want to play, Dad? We could toss the ball around. You don't have to do that for me, Allie. No, really, I want to. I can't right now. I have some work to do for tomorrow, all right? Come on, honey, I'll, I'll play with you. Your father's busy. But, Mom, you're a girl. 
Well, them's fighting words. You go on outside. I'll be there in a minute. He'll even play ball with you to make you happy. You haven't done anything with him in weeks. He's unhappy when I try to play with him. He's unhappy when I don't. It's not just Al. You haven't read any of your letters in over a month. I don't have time. I have to work. On that godforsaken speech. Yes. I have to deliver it tomorrow night. I can't put a single sentence together. No wonder when you don't know what it is that you want to say. Are you really going to go through with this campaign to cancel Christmas? I haven't decided. The Council of National Defense is proposing a ban on toy purchases during the holiday season. And they're asking parents to support America's war effort by buying Liberty Bonds this Christmas. I never thought that I would see the day when I'd be asking people not to buy toys, but I'm afraid those are the times we live in, gentlemen. Bonds are an investment in the safety of our nation. And it is our responsibility as the leaders of this industry to stand united in this effort. It's not a happy message. But we must embrace any effort to bring our soldiers home as quickly as possible. Now, I have to tell you that this next one was not my idea. <laughs> not my idea. But I do support the message. There'll be other Christmases, other seasons. Let's hope that this sacrifice will ensure that all of us can have a happy Christmas next year. Coming. Dad. See in the morning paper? I haven't seen much of anything yet. What's all the excitement? AC made the front page. Toymaker leads patriotic charge, inspired by AC Gilbert. Toy manufacturers agree we won't celebrate until our boys come home. <laughs> your speech was well received. I wonder how it will play with your son. <laughs> Can't expect women and children to understand. Women yeah. keep the factory going, and children are the reason we started this in the first place. My job is to keep this place in production. Your job is to keep people happy. You have I can't to do my job unless you do your have job. Some legitimate do your job. Concerns. You do they your have job. to be listened to. AC. Good morning. Uh, good work. And great publicity. Tell my family. Good morning, Sam. AC, I think you should know. This story's got folks pretty shook up. Everybody's talking about how things have changed around here, whether they can keep working under these conditions. What'd you tell them? I said you'd talk to them. Mr. Ryder, you want it on the telephone. I've got it, Sam. Go ahead, take it upstairs in my office. Here he is now! We can't keep working all these hours. All right, all right, all right, all right. One at a time, please. Anna, go first. 
We can't work these hours forever. I know, I know. Put in a lot of overtime on the firearms part of the contract. Yeah, without overtime. And hey. no breaks. Yeah. I had to cut back. Production was lagging. Yeah. Uh, because we're exhausted. We're working six hours a week. And since you shut down the children's center, I can barely afford to have someone watch my kids. I know. I, know. I understand. But we all know this is only temporary. The work's more dangerous now. Yeah, we should be getting paid more. You can't exploit the war for money. That is profiteering. Right. Oh. I've sent two cents to this war. And who's making the profit? Yeah. Maybe we should unionize. Unionize? Unionize? You get free medical advice and free legal advice, then we pay half the insurance premiums. No, it's not. What other company has a maternity policy? Twelve months leave of absence with benefits. You think you can do better? Right. Unionize! Restore the brakes. Yeah. All right. And we will see what we can do about raising overtime pay. All right. Overtime. You're giving people too much. They don't appreciate it. It'll be all right. I promise. Thank you. Excuse me. Scrooge's baby boy. Heard your dad canceled Christmas. So if he's gonna ruin our Christmas, we gonna ruin yours. You ruined our Christmas. <laughs> 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 What's the matter? Al was beaten up at school. What? Some of the children got angry because you canceled Christmas and they took it out on him. How are you feeling? I'm fine. Isn't she a beaut? Yeah, she's pretty colorful, all right. Would you like to tell me what happened? Not really. What are you doing? Just playing. What is all that? It's just some basic chemistry tricks. Tricks? Would you like to show me one? Sure. Blank. Hold it beside a candle. <laughs> it's 
It's invisible ink. You know, this could be a kind of a wonderful toy. Well, if I like it, probably no other kids will. Find out who those boys are. They're being punished. It's not good enough. I want to know their names, and I want to talk to their parents. Gilly, they're just boys. Are you defending them? No. It's all right for them to act that way? To gang up on a little boy? There are worse things in life than children not having toys. I thought I'd never hear you say that. Are you hearing it now? And you can sell these damn letters back! Why the hell do they keep writing to me? I don't want to know their hopes and dreams. I'm not their father. Gilly, stop it. I don't know how to stop it. Save for turning back the clock to when we made toys. To when I heard children's voices in the factory and Frank's voice. I want my brother back. And that's not going to happen. Any of it. Thomas Ryder was killed in action. For the war orphan, sir? Yeah. yeah. There you go. Bless you, sir. Something for the war orphan, sir? Not tonight. Who's in here? We're closed. There's not supposed to be anyone in here. Who is that?
Instruction book? My brother used to help me make models, but he had to go join the army. Dear Mr. Gilbert, if I'm really good this year, will Santa bring me an erector set? Dear Mr. Gilbert, your toys are the best. I'm building a giant erector set city to surprise my dad with when he gets home Dear from the Mr. army. Mr. Gilbert, if I'm really good this year, will Dear Santa Mr. bring me an erector set? I wish set? I could own every one of the toys. I'm I'm the best in erector Dear Mr. Set Gilbert, I wish I could own every one of your toys. Best in the world. children laughing. Children? Yes. And they led me right to Frank's gift. It must have been there since last Christmas. It's his voice. It was like a miracle. It was like he came home just to help me. And then, boom, suddenly the place is filled with smoke and the fans start up and all these letters start blowing around. How on earth did I that... I don't know. I'm telling you, it's like a miracle. Not so funny. Mm, nothing. I just like the story. No, 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 no. That grin means something. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. Spirit voice transmitter. I was just fooling around with it. That's how you did it? Did what? The voices in the factory. The smoke in my office. Don't be mad. Don't be mad. I'm beyond mad. I'm delirious. <laughs> how did you work the fans? Grandpa and I rigged a wire so that when you open the windows, BAM! All the fans start going. Your grandfather helped? So did Mom. How would you like to take a trip? Where? I was thinking Washington, D.C. Now? We can't let them cancel Christmas. Can we? We'll never get there by 6 o'clock. Yes, we will. Welcome to taxi. There's one. Oh, uh... Al told me you were part of his little scheme. It was his idea. He's quite a boy. Yes, he is. He's very proud of you. I know what you're going to try to achieve in there, Alfred. And I don't think for a minute you have the slightest chance of success. But I am damned proud of you for trying. realize we're probably about to make fools of ourselves. That would be heaven. 
<laughs> ah. A.C. Gilbert, I uh, have an appointment to speak to the Defense Council. For security reasons, sir, I have to check in your packages. You can't be serious. You want to take these in there to them? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Go right ahead. Thank you. Excuse me. Thank you. And good luck. <laughs> and we must maintain our rate of deployment to place another million troops in action over the next year. Look, As General us. Pershing believes, we cannot hope to see Germany surrender until well into next year. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, uh, before we adjourn, may I request your attention to one of our most active and patriotic advisors, Mr. A.C. Gilbert. Ten minutes, Mr. Gilbert. Thank you, sir. And uh, thank you all for, uh, for listening to me today. I'd like us all to consider not canceling Christmas. Mm. Mr. Gilbert, we are all anxious to go home. That's exactly my point, Mr. Daniels. Why hurry home? What waits for you there? Your family, your, your children. And what will they be doing when you walk through the door today? What would you like them to be doing? Fretting over the day's advances and setbacks in Europe. <laughs> They'll be playing. They'll walk through your doors and into your parlors and they'll be at tables or on the floor playing with their toys. Just the way we used to, gentlemen, not so very long ago. Oh. 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 <clears throat> You came here to have us play? Yes, sir, I did. Because play opens up the imagination, which then opens up new possibilities. And if we ever needed some new possibilities, it's right now. No toy is ever simply what it seems to be. It's, it's, it's a whole experience. It's a whole education. And America, in particular, is the home of toys that educate as they amuse, that help children begin to think about what they might become when they grow up. These toys have taught the rudiments of, of construction and design. You've all seen the, the Army's new combat bridge, all designed by the Army Engineering Corps. They built the prototype on an erector set. You know, I gave my boy an erector set when he was 12. I was at Harvard, taking architecture. Really? That's my boy. <laughs> Little tiny motors for toy airplanes and toy trains become massive and like ships and, and, and tanks. But they also become Mr. Ford's automobiles or cameras or recording machines. Who knows what else? Toys are played with by crews. They become games. And that fosters teamwork. Sportsmanship, all the high ideals we hold for American character. Most importantly of all, they foster ingenuity. New ideas. My son Al has come up with a wonderful new idea. Something that we would like to manufacture and make available as soon as possible. <clears throat> a home chemistry lab with safe simple, hands-on experiments that let children have fun while they're learning. What better way is there to educate the next generation of scientists and chemists? But there's more, there's much more. Mr. Gilbert, what does this have to do with canceling Christmas? What is it exactly that you want? I want to make toys again. I want us to give our children more than bonds for Christmas this year. I want to give them toys. 
that remind us of better times and help us begin to imagine a brighter future. This holiday and, and how we celebrate it is part of our American lives. These toys given by parents with love to their children are treasures. They last a lifetime. They make better children who may grow up to make a better world. This Christmas represent, after all, but the hope that one little child can make a big difference. If you cancel Christmas, you are canceling hope. And hope may be our greatest weapon at a time like this. Our sons, our friends, my brother, they're not fighting so that we can be less than who we are. They fight so that we can be all that we can possibly be. Let's not let our, our enemies take that away. Let's celebrate in spite of them. to go, dear. Yes, yes, yes. You wait at the hotel with Mary. Mr. Gilbert, we... I'm surprised you're still here. There was a fine presentation in there. Don't leave now. They're just tallying the votes. Mr. Roosevelt, can I ask you to help us? We need information on a soldier who's missing in action. Uh, who are you looking for? Our son, Private First Class Francis Gilbert. Let me see what I can find out. We'd be grateful Thank for you. anything you could do. Do you think there's any chance? We find missing men every day, Mrs. Gilbert. We won't know for sure till after the war is over the fate of many of them, but as AC says, we mustn't lose hope. Mr. Roosevelt. Looks like you're back in the toy business. Thank you. Oh, congratulations. Thanks to the impassioned appeal of this man who makes toys and believes in them and loves them, the boys and girls of the United States are going to awake this Christmas morning upon a day as merry as Christmas is past. <laughs> what do you think? I think you've lost your mind. No, sir. Whatever it is I've lost, I found it. We are making toys again. We still have munitions contracts to fulfill. We can do both. That means more workers and longer hours. A time and a half for overtime. And we can't afford that. I think we can. Even if it means eliminating some unnecessary management positions. Well, there's just one small problem. With the plant retooled and the factory working at full capacity, we just don't have enough room to make toys. I had a thought about that. We started this company at home. We'll start it over at home.
Can I have your attention, everyone? Sam, shut it down. Shut it down. Everyone, my son Alice just brought me great news. As of the 11th hour of this 11th day in the 11th month, Germany has signed an armistice. The war is over. We won. I will. <laughs> and after cooking all day, we would appreciate it if dinner lasted a little more than 20 minutes. You can say grace. Dear God, you've taken this world on a remarkable journey this year. We fought what some people are calling a world war and with your guidance, the world has survived it. Perhaps we're even a bit stronger and maybe a little bit wiser. We thank you for these teachings and for all your many blessings. Amen. Amen. Frank? Oh, oh Frank! Oh, God, tell me it's true. It's true, Mother. Oh, my God. She told us your battalion had been lost. I'll tell you all about it, but not tonight. It's Christmas. Sorry. Come on, everybody, let's sit down. You all right? Here. Looks beautiful, Mom. Here, just here. Just sit down. Okay. I missed. Oh, I want to know no, every actually, little thing from the moment I got on the boat. Actually, it's all been rather uneventful. Factory retooled for artillery. Yeah. You stop making toys. No, only temporary. Your brother That's started all working for the government. A dollar a year, man. But more than he's worth. And the Congress <laughs> tried to cancel Christmas. But your brother talked them out of it. He saved Christmas. What's the matter, AC? Not used to the sound of my voice. On the contrary. I've been listening to your voice very carefully. Merry Christmas, big brother. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. 